Welcome back everyone to part two of the Common Man's Woodworking Toolkit. So, I asked yesterday, in yesterday's video, uh, what you'd like to see next, and it was pretty much unanimous between two tools. It was the chisels and it was the hand saws. So today we're gonna to be doing the hand saws. Next episode we'll be doing the tools. If you're joining us for the first time, just quickly, what we're doing is we're putting together a bare bones, super, super budget hand tool woodworking kit with, um, you know, we're looking for those hidden gems, those, those items that, that we can have that will provide us years of work where we don't have to go and spend a fortune on. Maybe we wanna get into woodworking, but we're not sure if it's gonna be our thing and we wanna dip a toe in the water. That's kind of where we're at. So yesterday's video, of course, we, fit, we figured, we found a $20 plane that seems to be serviceable. And today we're gonna to see if we can find an affordable saw. Now I said in yesterday's video, I fear that we're gonna to have to to spend a little bit more money uh, to get a good saw. It's really important to get a good saw because working with a poor quality saw, um, it's, it's just not gonna be an option. So that's the bad news. The good news is that there are some great options out there for, for just a little over $20. So it's hard to pick one saw. Of course, you know, we have so many specialty things. There's gonna be ripping saws, there's going to be cross cutting saws, there's going to be fine detail, uh, dovetail saws, all those things, just like anything is very specialized. You know, you can't take a, a Prius and go pick up uh, a pallet of concrete. You need a pickup truck. You know, the both are vehicles, both will get you to, from point A to point B, but they have very different jobs. So today what we're going to concentrate on is a very general purpose saw. We're talking about when I'm thinking general purpose, like we want, what do we want? We want the Toyota Camry. Of saws, right? We want something that's reliable, that's good quality, that we can depend on. So with that narrowed down, we we have to make two important decisions. Now, there's uh, we're generalizing here, but there is essentially two different styles of saws that most people are going to be using. Traditional American style saw, which is this is a Stanley Fat Max saw. Uh, this is a saw that is very affordable. You should be able to find these in the twenty-five dollar range. This was actually the first saw that I purchased woodworking and I still use it today. It's a great saw because it is so universal. It's a big saw. It's a saw that can be used. You could build a house with this. You can do woodworking with it. A general purpose saw. This is a little bit longer version if we're just going to do woodworking. You know, maybe the shorter one, but the big difference is, is the American style. Well, I think it's a bit arrogant to call this an American style, the traditional how about the Western civilization style saw? It's gonna be a push saw. It means it's going to cut on the push. It's gonna cut on the push, not on the pull. So we've all seen these and, and, and nothing new here. Now what a lot of people uh, really like to go with, and, and I count myself in this, in this group, is the Japanese style saw, which we have right here. Now this saw, saw is made by Gaokucho. I think it's a Gaokucho. Fine, fine saws. And what I like about these saws is they cut so well and they're so universal because what we have is we have a cross cutting side here and we have a, a, a ripping side, excuse me, ripping side and a cross cutting side. So basically what we have is two saws in one and they are, as I said, a great value. This particular saw, which is probably the one I'd recommend here as a good all arounder is going to run you about $28. $28. Now some of the downsides of the Japanese saws is of course you're not going to be able to resharpen it. If that's something that's really important to you, you're going to want to go with more of a traditional Western civilization style saw. However, with that being said, these new teeth pattern are more of the American saws are mimicking the Japanese teeth pattern and you're not going to be able to sharpen these either. So. The other question that's going to come up, and it came up in a lot of comments yesterday was, well, you know, why don't, I thought you were always an advocate of the old tools. Why are you recommending we go out and buy these, these, these new tools? I went, I got many questions. I, I went to the, the local flea market and I got a Bailey's number four for 20 bucks and it was awesome. And that is awesome if you can find that and good for you, but it's not repeatable. It doesn't do the rest of us any good. Because you got a Bailey's plane for twenty dollars, it doesn't it doesn't help us. You know, maybe there's not a Bailey's plane for twenty dollars. Maybe we have to look for ten years, and we want to get involved with woodworking. So that's just not an option. Of course, if you can find a Bailey's number four plane for twenty dollars, 
Absolutely. I mean, do you think that that's going to be a better value and a better tool than, than this $20 Stanley? Yeah, it is, but it's not repeatable. It's the problem with miracles. You know, that's why you have people that base religions and faith on miracles, that that's the most important part. And very, you, maybe you did find a, have a miracle happen to you. I, I don't doubt it. Miracles do happen. But what good does that do us? You know, we, we, it doesn't help us. We need, you know, we need something we can go get. So that is the, that's the issue. So that's why we're, we're doing the new saws. Now, these Japanese saws, of course, are going to come in multiple sizes. This is the first one that I bought. I thought it was going to be a general purpose, and it was good for large stuff, but it's not good for woodworking. It's small things. It's too big. So what I'm going to recommend is going to be kind of a medium size traditional saw and, or the Japanese hand saw. Now, we're going to test these today, and we're going to find out which one works better. The price is so close, between $25 and $28, I think that... You know, they're pretty good competitors. So let's, uh, let's do a little, set up a little uh, real world, some real world scenarios here. And we'll, um, we'll come to the conclusion at the end, which one is gonna make it into the Common Man's Toolkit. So what we wanna try to go for today is a real world test. So what that means to me is, is cutting, doing a heavy cut. This is a two by six standard, two by six that you're gonna have around the place. We're gonna do a cross cut, we're gonna do a rip, and then we're gonna take both those saws and see if they can do a detail work. Can we get away with only one saw? Let's say we wanna do a dovetail on our custom tool grip. Are we gonna be able to do it with one of these tools or are we gonna to have to add an additional saw to it? So let's take this Doug Fir 2x4, chalk it up in the vise, and we're gonna find out which is going to be the best fit for us. All right, friends, let's simulate our real world cut. Now there's some, there's some factors that are, there's things that are more important than just the speed of the cut. You know, and that is the ability of the carpenter to cut a straight line. Now that's something that I have found to be very difficult to master and I certainly have not mastered it yet, but I th have heard a lot of discussion on this. Some, a lot of people say it's easier to cut a straight line with an English style, Western civilization style saw, push saw versus the Japanese. And, and I think the argument's made because of the thickness of the blade. I, I don't know if that's true. I'm gonna find out today. So we'll cut this two by six and we'll try to stay right on that line right there. We'll see which one seems to work better for us. So we'll start with the push saw and I'm just going to cut at a normal pace like I normally would. I'll do my best here. That is not very good. I have to say that's the worst cut I ever made. Nice that it happens on video for you guys. But you know what? I guess that's just, that, that, that's what some people can expect. I don't know why that happened. That saw is not that old. All right, so let's try the cut with the Japanese saw. And this saw, this is a pretty small saw to cut a big two by six like this, but we'll see how we do here. Well, thing kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? You know, to me, a Japanese saw is easier to handle. It's easier to cut straight. It cuts with less force and it cuts a much cleaner edge. But I'm also not an expert at this. But I don't know. What do we take away from that? I, I, I take away that the Japanese saw seems to cut a whole lot better than the other one did. So let's see how the saws rip. When you hear the term ripping, it means cutting with the grain. Cross cutting is across the grain. So we'll come in through here three inches. And this is uh, something that would be common for us to do if we were gonna cut a tenon right there. So we have those equal. Now the Japanese saw, if we look close here, we'll see that we have two different types of teeth on there. We've got 
these bigger teeth, which are supposed to be better for ripping. And then we have, of course, the, the crosscut teeth. So let's see. I'll try to be more careful with both saws here. Let's see how they work. Now that we can flip over here to the cross cutting teeth. Okay, same thing with the Stanley saw. Sure is a, seem to wanting to bind up. A lot of bind. Difficult. <clears throat> Find it a difficult saw to to use there. Okay, so again. I, I had a better experience and better luck with the uh, Japanese saw. If we look, we can see the finish. And this was, I'm doing it very quickly. You know, I would take more time working on a project, but I'm just trying to speed things along there. But you can see I had some difficulty here. I don't know what's going on right there. Um, it's hard to judge. You can see it's pretty, pretty rough where we started in there a little bit better. The, and I had a knot there, didn't I? I didn't even notice that. But um, it seem, seems to me that, I, I mean, the, my experience here that the Japanese saw um, seemed to work a lot better. I must admit, I'm a little surprised how poorly that, uh, that saw could. I couldn't cut straight. I did it twice, and I had the same problem both times. So the final test we'll do here is, 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 is it reasonable for us to, can we get a, a, a one saw that can do what we need to do? And that means doing some coursework and some, and some hip, small detail work like cutting a dovetail. Let's say on our toolbox, right? That we want to cut a dovetail. Deep enough there. Are we going to be able to take the, our one saw and, and do that? We're just going to kind of see. We're not going to cut a dovetail, but we're going to attempt to simulate it one here. Okay? So let's see. We'll start with the, the Japanese saw this time. Is, can we do precision work? No, the wrong side. If we needed to. Okay. That looks pretty good if we're going to do a big dovetail. So let's see about the Stanley saw. It works. It's binding terribly. Finish that cut off there. All right, let's see how much damage was done on the back side. So, if we flip this simulated dovetail over to the back side here, we can see what are we seeing. So, this is the Gaokucho, this is the Japanese saw, and this is the coming out of the back side. Look at the cleanness of the lines. Very clean lines. We could certainly, uh, that would be acceptable for a dovetail. Here we have the English style of the Stanley saw, 
And again, you know, of course, it's not what it's intended to do. It's a carpenter's, you know, bit heavier carpenter saw, not suitable. Certainly not suitable. What we're trying to find here, which is maybe the impossible, is one saw that we can do everything with. And that is not so much building a house as it is, as, as it is um, being able to do some woodworking projects. You know, building a bed for our, our, our loved one or a night table or toolbox or what have you. So on the front side, we can see right here that um, both saws are clean. This is actually the Stanley is very clean here. Actually, even maybe a little bit cleaner than the Gaucucho but this is still acceptable, especially if we, you know, if we took more care. This is not, not care, this is don't, don't hate. This is just a very quick and dirty simulation just for, for brevity's sake here. So that is kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, friends, what's our conclusion? What's our takeaway? Well, our, our takeaway, and I'm a little bit surprised, I, I'm a little bit surprised on, on how well uh, the Japanese saw handles being a small saw, being a saw that's, half the size of the Stanley saw. And I know this is not a perfect comparison, but in our price range, in our budget, these are the saws that are available to us. You know, this, there's not a lot of saws outside of that. And, and the, what my experience, what I experienced with that saw cutting and, and curving like it did is, um, I, I'm gonna show that because it's indicative of, of what really happens in real life. You know, I'm, I wasn't trying to make that cut. That, I, I don't know what happened if it was extreme tension in the wood, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that both saws cut the same wood and, and one of them for, for an amateur, for a layman like myself, uh, um, I, I got a lot better results, a lot better results. It seemed to be cleaner in the rip and it certainly uh, was better. I, I have no doubt that we could use this saw if we decide to do a, a little detail. I think we should try to do a, a, a little detail that's that, on our toolbox that's achievable by by all of us so i don't know what that be maybe we don't do a dove table tail but maybe we do a finger joint something a little bit simpler i want to do something that we're proud of that, we're, that that we can when we look at it that um, is an accomplishment for us so having a saw that is able to to do all three things cross cutting ripping as well as even pressing we can press it in to do a little detail work like that i think it's it's just um, head and shoulders above what we saw with the Stanley Fat Max. Now, I, I've really, I've been torn with, uh, I really thought we needed to recommend two saws and I actually ordered um, these two saws for the comparison. Now this is, uh, this is the one two kit punch here. If we were gonna have two saws, we would want something that's got what they call a back on it. It's got a stiffen, stiffness on there. You can see that this one here is very, very, oh, look at that, that's a neat sound. Whoops, nice sound. Wobbly, where this one has a reinforced back on it that keeps it stiff, you know, not near as you can't really bend it. And what that does is it gives you those straight cuts. And so this is a, a Japanese dovetail saw. This is more of a Western style dovetail saw. They both essentially do the same thing. I was gonna do a test on these too, but I, I don't wanna drive the price up. I don't wanna make this um, to be something that not just, that people can't afford or just becomes unrealistic. So let me know in the comments on that if you'd like to see that. I, I just don't know if we should go down that road because what, what I'm seeing here is that for, for $28 here, we have a, a wonderful tool made in Japan with the, the bamboo and the, or the, whatever this is, the wrap. It's, it is a delightful tool. It's a, it's a wonderful value. The blades are replaceable. You can save a little bit of money yeah, if you want to replace the blade. But from what I've heard in my experience so far with my big one, um, it will last a long, long time. So this is what I'm going to recommend. I'm going to recommend the Gaucucho, and I'll put this uh, in the, the link to this down in the comments and in the subject heading right here. We're at $28 shipped on Amazon. So that brings our total price. So far, for our two tools in our Common Man's Toolkit, we have $20 plus $28, so we're just under $50 for a super high quality saw, as good as you're gonna get. I don't know that you could do much better for this than Japanese pole saws. I don't know that there is anything out there. Um, and then a, a serviceable plane. So 
Here we go. All right. So next, um, let me know again. Let me know if you want to, if you think that this should be added. Give a, the the yay or nay on this, and uh, we will uh, will address that. But the chisels are coming up. Um, the chisels, of course, were the next uh, most requested, or the, just as requested. And I have found something that I think is really, a, a, and I'm excited to share with you. Really excited to share with that. So, all right. So if you would uh, just, if you're joining us for the first time, out. When we're done putting this toolkit together, whatever that's going to be, it's going to be around 10 or 12 tools, I think. At the end of that, we're going to build a project. We're going to build a, a, a nice grip that's going to hold all of our tools, something that we can be proud of, something that's not too advanced that the beginner can't do. And if you would like to win that kit, I will take all of these things that I've purchased and, and I'll have everything tuned up and sharp and ready to go. I'll build the toolkit, we'll put them all together, and one of you guys is going to win that. So if you want to enter to win that, all you have to do is comment on all of these videos and they're all going to be start with, start, to start with a tested. That's what I think so far. Okay, so there we are. Next time, chisels or perhaps the dovetail saw. This is going to be in the $30 range. I just don't know. Do we need it? It's very nice. It's very nice to have, but do we need it? Is the question. I'll have to think on that. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Wait a minute. We're not done yet. I was going to do a Manly Manners today. So Manly Manners, if you're joining us new, is a book called Don'ts for Husbands, written 1913. And I love it because... It's completely devoid of political correctness. And what it is, it's written a guide to young men uh, that are, well, a guide to all men that are married on how to, well, how to have a happy, a happy wife. Happy wife, happy life. So some of these things are a bit old fashioned. So, you know, you got to put it into context. But I think that there's wonderful, wonderful jewels of advice in here. Most of the time. Well, the last one we did wasn't very good advice, was it? Have, have, maybe we should let Manly Manners redeem itself today. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to flip it open here and we'll just rely upon providence. Providence will dictate to us what it is that we need to learn today. All right, so Manly Manners, page 58, says, I haven't premeditated this, so it's off the cuff. Don't forget to buy your wife a pair of gloves occasionally. She will always be pleased to have them. I'm going to go on here. Don't insist on wearing your hair or your mustache in a style you know she hates. Just try it another way to please her. And finally, don't persist in wearing that very disreputable, disreputable coat when some rather starchy people are coming to tea. If you're wearing it makes your wife feel uncomfortable, it won't do you any harm to change it, even if you think it's a bore. Now that's interesting. You know, that, that's something that has happened to us recently. Now, I'm speaking to men um, because I am one and, and it's easy for us to slip in our old ways. And that last one, that last one really resonates with me. Here's the story. I'll tell you the story. So Mrs. W, I try to keep an eye on her and, and she has a lot going on in the homestead. She helps me run the channel. Um, she does all of the, the bookkeeping. She does all of the homeschooling. Uh, she does all of the cooking um, and, and, and the gardening. I mean, she just, she's just a tremendous hard worker. And sometimes, you know, and I keep an eye on her, and I, I can tell when there's times that, you know what, she's reaching the end of her rope, and I need to step in and to help a little bit. And the thing that I found that helps out the most is, <laughs> is relieving her from the duties uh, of cooking a dinner. Um, Cooking three meals a day is a great burden. So when I see that she is looking a little overwhelmed, and she'll never complain. She's never complained to me, but I, I keep an eye on her. I say, honey, let's let's go out to dinner. I'll take you out to dinner, and and she enjoys that because it's one of the it's one of the rare the few places that we are we can we can sit and talk really really talk intimately together face to face across the table. You know, we have all these things going on, and I'm running the channel, and she's doing her things, and and she enjoys that. I think more than getting out of the cooking, I think it means more to her to have some time with her husband. And so um, something that, that I noticed that I, I've tried to change recently is that, um, so I would say, all right, Mrs. W, let's, uh, let me take you out to dinner. And I don't think she's ever said no. Drive her down there. But what I've done in the past is, is I haven't taken a moment and, and cleaned myself up. 
and, and um, you know, I've, maybe I've got my tin pants on, which she's not a big fan of. Um, I've got a dirty shirt. I'm covered with sawdust because I've been out in the shop or working. And, and that's just perfectly fine for me because the community that we live in is pretty casual um, to go down there. And, and, and I hadn't really thought about it. And I noticed that she always t took a moment to, to doll up and, and to, to make herself look um, um, beautiful and presentable for me. And, and she mentioned something in an offhand way that um, um, really cut me to the core was that um, how our, it's important how we represent ourselves, how our family is represented when we go out into the public. Um, are, we, um, are we neat? Um, are, we, are we reasonably clean? You know, and there's, 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 there's time and place. If you're a working guy, a working woman, and, and you have to stop what you're doing, and you're, you work as an excavator, and you're all covered in mud, and you need to get something to eat, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you have the uh, uh, op opportunity to do so. So that really uh, struck with me, her mentioning that, that it's important how um, to maintain the, the honor of the family and, and the appearance and, and that we, who we are, um, and it only takes a little bit of time. So I don't, I don't I, rarely is the time that I go out and take her to dinner in the tin pants anymore. I just take a minute, it only takes 10 minutes or so, and brush my hair and put a clean shirt on and, and you know, something and try to make myself presentable for her um, and so that she's not uh, ashamed to be with me <laughs> when I go out. So I, I think that kind of applies to the manly manners. Um, I think women are better about that than men are. We get, you know, we just get in our ways. The older I get, the more set in my ways I am and the less I like change. And I think that's just the way, way it is. But um, let's remember that something that may not be important to us, um, i.e. putting a clean shirt on and, and how you look when you go out to eat, um, it, it may be very important to our loved ones. So I, all I'm saying is that we should keep an eye on that. And I, um, um, I'm, I'm glad that she mentioned that. And I I think it's the right thing to do. So that's our Manly Matters for today. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.